Good evening, ghoulies, and welcome to Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. And I'm back here in the laboratory because I've been picking up messages from the past here in my transfibrillating cannabinator later that uh, there's trouble in the past. And uh, I think it's time for a little time travel again on Crimson Theater. Now, I've readjusted uh, the trifibic flagellation uh, enhancement simulator, and I believe that uh, time travel could be possible in this particular instance. And uh, I really don't know what to say, Ghoulies, except, of course, tonight's movie is the Mexican Fiesta, The Brainiac. So, you know, break out your tamales, your burritos, have a, a, a chicken fiesta gordito, and uh, let's roll right on into this one. I'm telling you what, reminds me a lot uh, of Black Sunday, the way the whole thing starts out. And, you know, the Mexican movies are pretty creepy and atmospheric. I have to give them an A-plus for atmosphere. And uh, I thought this was a rather uh, clever little film. Uh, quite strange. Also, it's, uh, you know, of course, the Brainiac, the Baron of Terror. Quite interesting. And uh, now who do I see coming my way through this metamorphosis of time continuum? Who could this strange fellow be? I have come from the past, Herr Doctor. You are not that wizard, are you? No, he is not the wizard. I have come from the past. You have come from the past. Show your face. If I must. You must on Crimson Theater. It's just the way it is. Ah, I see. I've not seen you before. And what is your name? I am a distant from Igor. Very distant. You are very distant from, from Igor. From the 14th century. Yes, and why have you come to me? Is it one of my experiments has brought you here? Yes, Herr Doctor, to warn you of the past and your queen. My queen? You have forgotten your queen. I have forgotten my queen? Yes, Herr Doctor. I don't recall a queen. Was this some past episode of dementia that I have escaped? Oh, you do not know why. Dearest has not been around for a while. No, I have not seen her. I thought she was uh, digging up uh, tulip bulbs. We have left her back in the 14th century. How did she get back there? She'll never fit in. The burner is a witch. Herr Doctor, I have only come to warn you. Okay, well, we've got warnings. and you want to hang out, I'm going to read the mail. Uh, mail this way? Yes, we don't have a courier. Um, this one here says it's from Chris Fisher. Tell uh, the doctor to send his poor old cousins, Chris and Dave Fisher, a t-shirt to Florida. We could do some advertising for him in Tampa. I think we would more than likely want to send them a videotape they could find the local access station in Florida and uh, Crimson Theater could be rolling along. And, you know, things have been going quite well in Milwaukee, so I don't need this time travel trouble. But uh, if you tell me Dearest is in danger, I, I may have to do something about this. There's no doubt about it. Uh, there's all sorts of minions of evil trying to uh, upset Dearest. But, uh, the, you know, that's basically what it says. Chris and Dave Fisher, they're long lost cousins of Dr. Destruction. And we'll have to get on that. Uh, well, I don't have Igor around to, to do. Are you going to be able to stay long or uh, you don't know? My time is short, Herr Doctor. I could come back and stay for a while. When okay. When gets back, where Dearest is in trouble, and I will have to probably be forced to take you with me, or I will require your assistance, your expertise. Well, I don't know if I'm ready to believe such a thing. Anyway, I don't know who John Gustin is. I maybe I ran into him on one of those uh, one of those uh, binges, you know. Uh, Fear and loathing in Kenosha. Dale, here's the picture I made of you. Peace, John Gustin. And I think Lampini will get a big kick out of this picture. Uh, looks like something Lampini himself might have drawn. And uh, you know, that, that kind of looks like a distant relative too, more than it looks like uh, my, me, myself there. And it says, uh, kinggusgraphics.com. Hmm, interesting. Looks like I'm sort of wearing a cummerbund there. I never owned one of those. And likely won't since uh, Mike Bjorn uh, and the doctor don't speak these days. I don't know. We'll get into that later. But uh, maybe, you know, there's always a, ch a chance of a resolution in Kenosha. Nah, not. Anyway, here's uh, another strange one. Dear Dr. Destruction, I have to warn you, 
there is a person with dark hair near to you who wants to do you harm, but this person will soon disappear from your life. Could this be dearest? P.S. The bottle of Kaopeptate silver I gave you has expired. Can I have the bottle back? Snake in the grass, or is it Wayne in my ass? I don't know. One of the two uh, probably boils down to the same thing, ghoulies. Anyway, uh, tonight's feature, the Brainiac. This is about a crazed baron of terror who was sentenced to uh, death for being, uh, what, now what's walking across the camera there? We've got all kinds of beasts in the castle. Anyway, uh, you know, Baron of Terror, he comes back from the past, go figure, uh, to eat brains in the 1969 or 61. I know I watched it, I think, but of course, you know, the doctor was, uh, he was in, in, in great uh, dire fear and loathing at the time. Uh, but anyway, ghoulies, we did get a little bit of footage when uh, the troop of uh, Rocky Horror Kids from the Oriental Theater up in Milwaukee, uh, the CentralDaydreamers.com, I believe it was, uh, came to Parkside on a Thursday night and uh, did their performance of Rocky Horror, something you probably never heard of. Or have you? Rocky Horror? He has no... Alien to me. Yes, a uh, lot of things are alien to me there, buddy. But anyway, ghoulies, uh, we'll get to that footage a little bit later on. Right now, you get to the Brainiac. The Baron of Terror on Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater, Fear and Loathing in Kenosha. What's a Crimson Theater? Oh. All right, ghoulies. Oh. We still got this one hanging out here. It's terrifying. He's been absorbed into our dimension. It's okay, you are welcome. You can hang out. I don't know what Thank he knows you. of the yeah, Rocky yeah. Horror Picture Show, but as you know, ghoulies, just by chance, the doc ended up at the Rocky Horror Picture Show that was at Parkside, and the Sensual Daydreamers, they're a little theater troupe that acts out uh, the Rocky Horror characters while the movie's playing. We caught up with some of them, um, and of course, I, did I tell you the guy that was playing, uh, uh, what's his name, Meatloaf's part? Eddie, Eddie. It, it, it was, uh, it was, what's his name, Beer um, City Mike, is that yeah, his Beer name? Beer City Mike. Yeah, he was there, and uh, I also remember the other guy, you remember Della in the smoothies? Yes. I can't remember the guy's name. I think it was Justin. We'll find out in the footage. You know, the doctor's mind is slipping with all these strange things this going on. But in any case, he played the Riff Raff character. Uh, <laughs> they're great. For any of you people that don't know what the Rocky Horror Picture Show was about, and it does get a little bit lost with everyone shouting things at the movie, but that's truly the only You're way. Toast. That's the only way that you should see it. If you've seen it on video, you have no concept of what was possibly going on. And if you've seen it on VH1, well, that's completely wrong. You should uh, have seen it, it at the Royal Theater. Theater. Theater back before anybody dressed like the characters. I remember everyone dressed like the Time Warpers and brought squirt guns to try to wreck your makeup. Yeah. Yeah. That was in the 70s, ghoulies, and that was that was probably the greatest time, uh, you know, of one all of time. the greatest times that ever was had here in Kenosha. Anyway, Rocky Horror Picture Show manages to combine horror movie nostalgia with uh, 70s glam rock and sort of uh, sexual taboos camp. and uh, lots of camp a little bit of Joan Crawford mixed with a little meatloaf you know and uh, a little bit of sheer horror with the comedy for the most part is a comedy but the actual scene the Frankenfurter Frankenfurter uh, cutting meatloaf up remember that and the screaming after that's probably one of the greatest shots in horror history that was quite effective so this uh, movie the rocky horror it picture was a show, great horror movie to me rock. it is the greatest rock and roll movie rocky ever horror horror. made rocky horror it was the very secret to of that time itself yes it was quite the great movie but anyway i can go on and on about that but we're going to get into that rocky horror footage that we shot at Parkside about a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that. Oh, you weren't there. You know nothing of this. Lampini wasn't there either. Okay, you weren't there either. But uh, you were there in spirit, I know but that. But of course. Okay, ghoulies. Anyway, you get to that beautiful <laughs> Parkside Rocky Horror footage. Please, we're here at uh, UW Parkside and uh, they're premiering, guess what? Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, you know, the cult classic from the 1970s that mixed uh, glam rock with monster movie nostalgia and uh, took the midnight movies by, by storm. I see we got a sign over here. If it's wet or if it burns, 
it's not a repeat and not allowed inside. So I guess refreshments can be purchased uh, elsewhere. So um, I'm sure, does that mean no toilet paper and popcorn? You can have toilet paper. Popcorn burns, doesn't it? You can, you can Especially if you get the cheap brand. <laughs> anyway, ghoulies, we're gonna we're gonna check it out inside and see if we can hook up with the cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. They're already from uh, Milwaukee, right? Yeah. See, they've come a long way for a Thursday night here in uh, somewhere in the wetlands of uh, Kenosha. All right, ghoulies, we're still here waiting in line for the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And uh, we ran into somebody here that kind of resembles the Eddie character. He also looks like a, perhaps a distant relative of the Docs. I don't know. But uh, you've seen the Rocky Horror Show, obviously, before. Or, yeah, big fan of Rocky Horror. Big, big fan of I've been a fan since it came out. Fan for Really? Since I saw it. What's your overall interpretation of what the movie's meaning supposed to be? Have fun. Uh, that'll work for the doc. I don't know, it just to me it incorporates the early, uh, the early days of uh, Lamb Rock, the Alice Cooper, David Bowie, New York Dolls, with uh, lots of good old horror nostalgia. The red curtain in the, uh, in the movie looks a lot like the one in the, uh, the Roosevelt Theater, movies. that's where the docs saw it for the first time. And uh, back then, no one even knew what to do yet, but they sort of, then everybody just kind of dressed like the time warmers instead of the characters. No one was doing that yet. And they'd all bring squirt guns, and they'd try to squirt your makeup on the record. That was the big thing back then. But uh, as you look over here, you see some other uh, eager, uh, over there, cameraman, uh, you see some other eager, uh, eager uh, Yes, this gentleman's gonna, he's very proud. He's gonna, like he's always friends to see him like that. Huh? All right, ghoulies, things are starting to get quite fun, and we've run into, you know, I'm sh obviously you play the Janet character, and you're from the, uh, the uh, Milwaukee group that does it at the Oriental, I imagine, right? And uh, when did you first see Rocky Horror, and when did you decide to really get involved with it? I didn't see it until actually college, um, and I didn't come back until a couple years later. One of my friends was going to the show, asked if I wanted to come along, and um, you know went there. Saw everyone shouting and getting into it, and I just liked it ever since. So yeah, do you do you like it? Uh, watch it sometimes without uh, everyone, you know, like at home where it's quiet, so you can pick up on the little uh, hidden things. In the um, movie? Well, we have to practice the blocking so we can try and get as close to the characters as possible. So I end up watching the movie at least once before every show. But I have sat down with just nobody shouting to uh -huh. watch it. Well, sometimes I, I saw, I, I always saw a deeper meaning in it. Sometimes that gets lost, but that's okay. Sometimes that gets lost because I think the movie did have sort of a, a serious side. It really wasn't intended, of course, for this sort of phenomenon to have happened. But, you know, thank God it did. I've enjoyed it for many years. I, I saw it back. 70s was at the Roosevelt Theater and people didn't even dress as the characters yet they were they were just as mainly like the time warpers they'd all bring squirt guns and try to wreck your makeup you know? and all of us we all wore makeup all the time anyway because that's just the way we were as many ghoulies know how that went but uh, you know it's just a really impressive movie I think great soundtrack to me it's the greatest rock and roll movie I think that was ever made period in my book and obviously you've been quite effective yourself Right. And uh, you make a very good Janet. Oh, thanks. I'm very impressed. And I hope you uh, introduce us to the rest of the cast. And uh, you know, you've got a Frankfurter somewhere, right? Yes. Get he, his makeup on. Is he a good Frankfurter? Uh, he's very charismatic uh -huh. and likes his role very, very much. So oh, I, I think see. He's very well, that's great. And a riffraff and the whole. Awesome. I can't wait, Ghoulies. A little fun on a Thursday night here in Kenowhere. So uh, we're going to just wander around and then we'll catch up to some more people down the road and if you want to help us out with that we'd love to meet everybody sure okay thank you and wh wait what's your name oh, anyway. i'm joanna joanna okay ghoulies well we're gonna wander around see what kind of trouble we can find on uh dr destruction's big rocky horror uh expose that's what we'll call it <laughs> we never know these things you know we good. don't rehearse <laughs> maybe we ought to nah <laughs> <laughs> All right, ghoulies, we're getting ready for the big feature, Rocky Horror Picture Show. And uh, we've run into some of the other cast members that are from Milwaukee. You guys, uh, you do it up at the Oriental, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you, okay, uh, would you give me your name? I know you play in Columbia, right? Uh, my name's Ashley. Ashley, and uh, when did you first get into the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Um, I started I started the cast just over two years ago, and I've been doing it for around five, six years. 
Awesome. <laughs> and of course, you're playing Magenta. And what's your name? Annie. Annie. What attracted you to Magenta's character in particular? Well, I used to play Janet. She was really boring. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, you know, I always thought that you know Magenta didn't get enough public uh, enough time on the movie myself. And you're playing. Oh, I play Brad. You're playing Brad. Yeah. Brad Majors. And what what drew you to the Brad Majors uh, part? Well, I like getting stripped. <laughs> by the girls, and I get to wear underwear for most of the show. Right. So uh, it fit it fit me pretty well. So we're gonna have a, a long stint of seeing you in underwear tonight, obviously. Usually. Yeah, we I are. see. <laughs> see, uh, the cameraman here. See, he's never been. He's seen it on on video, but he's never been to a live uh, live show. So I guess that would make him a virgin then. Uh, yes, that's what I was trying to explain to him before. I'm glad I was I was waiting to see if that was going to come up. But uh, yeah, we'd love to you know catch some of you guys doing your, your show tonight and uh, you know join in or catch you after the show all together and uh, you know great that you're doing what you're doing. I started watching it back in, when it came out. <laughs> so <laughs> about 420 years ago, Coolies. Well, you know they all know they all know that. Jeff. What's that? Probably something. Yeah, it's longer than that. Yeah. So that means it's. Yeah, Maybe thirtieth anniversary anniversary's yeah. coming up, huh? And of course, I know you guys probably check out the Crimson Theater up in Milwaukee, right? My show. I do. Have you seen it before? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, monster movie? Godzilla. Yeah, they got, you know, they got to get some Godzilla movies out here. I just found out about this last minute and uh, really was excited about it. So we had to come out here and include it on one of our shows, a little Rocky Horror expose. Anyway, Ghoulies, uh, who knows what's next? You'll find out. Hey, Ghoulies, we're, we finally made it into the theater here. We caught up with Jerry, who plays, of course, Riff Rap. Uh, also was in a local band, Dell in the Smoothies, uh, for some of you that might remember. You make a great Riff Rap, by the way. Uh, outstanding. But, uh, you know, how long, how, when did you first get into Rocky Horror? And, you know, the... I've been doing it longer than I'd like to admit. I believe about seven years. Seven years, wow. And uh, it's getting near its 30th anniversary, I think. It'll be next year, probably. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. And uh, well, it's going to be a great time. We want to hook up with everybody. We interviewed some of your other uh, other cast members. And you're doing it up in Milwaukee, of course, at the Oriental. And you're in Milwaukee the first and third Saturday of every month. Wow, awesome. We'll have to catch up with them up, up there, too, as well. And uh, any any special words for someone that might have never seen this in a theater before? It's deliciously decadent. You must have an experience it for yourself. I'll tell you what, Ghoulies, you ought to go check it out up at the Oriental if you aren't here tonight. Anyway, Ghoulies, uh, who knows what's next? We'll catch up to some, uh, some other cast members and... Other strange people too. There's a lot of other just weirdos. There's more strange people in Kenosha than per, per square foot than anywhere else in the world. I believe this is true.
Not right now, no. There you are. I hope you enjoyed the Brainiac, the Baron of Terror. I thought this one was quite a fun feature, and I might actually have to stay up and watch the show this week just to watch it. <laughs> Fury of the Wolf Man. I, well, we watched that one in the studio, didn't we? Uh, oh, you weren't here. I forgot. <laughs> well, you were here, though. Fury of the Wolf Man. Interesting. We will get out on Bray Road and investigate those werewolf uh, stories. Of course, Rocky Horror Picture Show footage. Maybe you got a little bit of clue of the real deal of Rocky Horror. Uh, and I've heard, rumor has it, that Richard O'Brien, who is the creator and also played Riff Raff in the movie, may be visiting one of the Kenosha universities uh, this fall. Uh, the doc would most definitely try to hook and up with that. And he wrote it. He wrote it. He wrote the music. It was fantastic. You know, it's awful, awful amazing, though, how someone can write an extremely 
awesome film like Rocky Horror and turn it around and make Shock Treatment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, oh. Shock Treatment's actually the sequel to Rocky Horror. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, actually it is the sequel. Uh, of course, uh, Frankenfurter isn't in it. What's a sequel? Uh, it's a, sort of a sequel without the slurring. Anyway, uh, if you get a chance, check it out. It's pretty interesting. I really shouldn't have dissed it like that. Uh, shouldn't have done that at all. We want to remind you, ghoulies, of course, about us being up at the Trollenberg on the 22nd, uh, hopefully, um, uh, in, in May, May 22nd, of course, in Milwaukee. And things uh, for our Milwaukee viewers, we just love the response we're getting from Milwaukee. Uh, and we hope to get out in more cities. And, uh, you know, we're getting mail from Florida. I don't know how they're seeing the shows. But, uh, of course, uh, if you want to look for certain episodes, you can always Get email us, I suppose, uh, for some certain episodes. Yeah, if there was a cameraman in the castle, uh, there would be a close-up of that. I don't know if that's going to be an authorized uh, excellent. Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. Beautiful. Theater. Well, the thing is, it has to, I have to draw, <laughs> draw in some parts there. Interesting, to say the least. I love it. But, you know, I'm getting... I drew it. I'm heading for 430. And, uh, you know, last year, of course, I had my 420th. No one got the 420. Except uh, Wayne. Yeah, well, no, he didn't get it. He, he already got so much in the past that he'll never be the same again, the poor guy. I don't know. I guess he really hasn't done me, no physically any harm. But, uh, you know, this is the kind of little little parasite, much like a certain individual here that likes to put the religious tracks in my laboratory equipment, you got to wonder if one of these guys is going to flip out someday and go shoot somebody. Of course, the bullets would go right through this ghoul, but uh, you never know. I don't need the inconvenience at any rate. It's got to be silver to kill me. Yes, I guess so, because there was a werewolf in the dorms. Look for the cougar uh, still, still on the loose. Now, this one's starting to worry me here. What is your problem? Like, like a never... distant relative. Talk to us. Yeah, a numb skull. What are you trying to say? Be him. Uh, I, I don't know. What are you trying to say? Are you going to sum it up here? You must trust the reason. You must trust the reason. It is time. What is time? Time. Is it time to? You must time? trust. The reason. What do you make of this name, King? What, what he says is the truth. The reason. What he says Listen is the truth. Listen to what I say. What he says is the truth, my friend. I shall travel with you. It is time. Itself? Fear not. Time. I don't know, ghoulies. I'm. Ghoulies, as you know, Crimson Theater is in dire need of funding and things that are, you know, the castle's in ruins and we, we, we need your solid cash. Please send us your money. We need it. immediate donations. Uh, this fellow brought no money with him to the show. I need soap. We, he needs soap. We need new laboratory equipment, but honestly, folks, if you want some better movies, uh, we need some better money. 
Want your money now? 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 So send your hard-earned cash to Doctor Destruction at the address below. Not that address. The address below that. Send it to the Yep, yep. Send it to Doctor Destruction at the address below. That's right, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Because we need your money now, and we want your money Come and now. Come us live! Want your money now. 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 We need your money. So please send it to the address below. Now you get back to the Brainiac on Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. And we want your money now.